I'm preparing this leather to put it back on the camera. This was the brass plate that was over part of it. And this was where the leather was quite bumpy. And is it's been glued down at least once before. Now there's Zeiss bumps formed here. That's corrosion product formed between the brass plate and probably the chemicals in the in the leather from the tanning process, I presume. Yeah, this has got sticky tape on it. It's um it's been taped. Some sort of double-sided tape, I believe. Anyway, I want all that rubbish off there. Otherwise, there's no chance of getting that leather to stick down flat. Hopefully it'll scrape off. Yeah, it's coming away. So it means that probably the camera has been serviced before. I would think, and someone's used... Well, they've got multiple layers of adhesive because the brass plate was stuck down to the camera and then the leather was stuck down on top of the brass plate. It's only like a shim, it's not very thick. But these here's little pockets of that green Zeiss bump crap here. I've got to get it out. You can see the bright green of it. That's the corrosion products, and it's pushed right into that leather. It means that leather's been stretched right up. Of course, if I want that leather to ever lie flat, I've got to get those lumps and bumps out from behind it. Anywhere I see green, I've got to get it out. That's just more of that tape. I'll have to clean that down with a bit of naphtha, I think. See if I can uh, lift any more of that rubbish off there. That's certainly a lot better. I'm not sure what adhesives have been used in the past. It could be shellac that was used at one stage. Shellac does, will typically dissolve in alcohol without too much trouble. There's that piece. Let's have a look at the piece to the other side. It's got a bit of paint lying around loose there that's come off with it. Otherwise that's quite good. have to get any loose adhesive off the leather because otherwise um, the new adhesive will just peel it off and the uh, leather won't stay where it's wanted. Okay so those two pieces look okay. I'm looking at this brass shim. There was certainly a lot of adhesive put on here.
it is very very thin yeah look at it on this side the corrosion and rubbish Well, well, I'll try cleaning this with some acetone. I want to lift as much of that rubbish off there as I possibly can. That did clean up quite well with acetone. Um, seemed to make the difference. This, this brass shim covered this area here on the camera. Can you see any of it? Yeah, this area here it covered. So that's where it's got to go back. I want to get the, to take the back off now again so I can get those brackets off. First I'll glue that shim back in place. So I'll just apply a little bit of it adhesive there. That was probably a bit generous. and just glue that down in position turn my attention to the other side of the camera we have to shut these curtains, the uh, contrast is too high here This side the leather is in good order. It's not all distorted. It should glue down very well. Since it's a large piece of leather I can apply the adhesive direct to the leather and then spread it out. Small pieces of leather you are best advice to apply your adhesive to a piece of paper and then transfer it across on a toothpick so that you get exactly the right amount exactly where you want it this adhesive is soaking in fairly quickly because that Leather is quite dry. Alright, if I can get this to stop sticking to my fingers for a minute, we'll get this on the camera. Coming apart at this point, that's the narrow point, so that's hardly surprising. I'll put some extra glue under there. Leather tends to shrink as it ages, it dries out and it shrinks. So it's never enthusiastic about stretching back over places like that.
leatherettes can shrink too. It'd be a major nuisance. Alright, let's see if we can get that pressed down into there. Yeah, the surface of the leather's broken up a bit there, that'll have to be covered with a bit of polish once it's all done. That looks good, at least it's nice and flat. And on this side, we can put this leather on here now. And I'll do the same job with this. I'll... These are bigger pieces of leather that I'm normally dealing with, so it's a bit of a challenge to get it, all the adhesive on. All at the same time, without it drying out too much, or curing I suppose. Mostly dealing with 35mm cameras, the biggest piece of leather I would normally have to deal with would be the leather on the back door. And I don't have to deal with them very often. Okay, get this back in the picture. Well, yes, this leather certainly shrunk. Doesn't want to go down around features like that for a start. Which makes it hard to get it centered evenly in the camera body. Let's run that round the edge there. That's pressed down. Yeah, it's round that frame counter window. That leather has shrunk down so that it doesn't want to press down flat around it. Okay, we're still in the picture only just. I'll see if I can iron out these bumps. The Zeiss bumps that we had. Yeah, no, nah, it's not really a great improvement. It's some, but not not enough. The strap lugs can go back on, I suppose. Now these look a little bit like a shoulder screw, I'm not sure that they've got it, enough shoulder on them. So they're probably just done up tight into the body. They don't really have a big enough shoulder, I suspect that they've been tightened up and that the shoulder has bitten in to the aluminium body. And as a result, they don't stick up as proud as they should do. I don't think there's much I can do about that. Uh, probably a, a drop of um, Loctite under that screw so it stays where it's put might be the answer. Of course I'll have exactly the same problem on this side of the camera.
Yeah, that one, that one's good. The screw's down hard, but it stays where it's put. There's room to get the bracket to slide down behind it. On this side, if I tighten the screw down that much, there's no room to get that bracket to slide down behind it. And they, of course, are for removing the door, being able to remove the back, because on the roller flex that can sometimes be a handy thing to do. There were all sorts of uh, accessories available. There was a plate back available for a lot of the roller flexes. Of course, we don't much use plate films these days. That's looking quite good. Now there was something else I wanted to deal with here. And the camera was missing a small chrome screw at this point. I'm going to have to see if I can find one in my parts. Right, let's see what I've got. I doubt I'll have an exact match, but as long as I've got something the right thread pitch and with the right head shape, will be in... in will be right. So it's oh, that one looks pretty close. Right, I'll try that one. No, too small. Of course, I don't want to use any crosshead screw. That wouldn't look right at all. Well, this isn't looking too promising. I'll have to look somewhere else. Well, I did get the leather back on the front. I have to say that was a bit of a fight. It's very hard wriggling that leather around all of those obstructions and getting it glued down firmly. As for the uh, screw here, I did not have a slotted chrome plated screw of appropriate size and thread, so I was forced to use a um, crosshead screw and we will agree to never talk about that again everything else we're good to go nice clean camera this one should work very well what do I need to do to this now well I've got an extra job I need to do to this I'm going to put a bright screen in the top but that's really a um, an extra job the servicing of the camera itself is now complete but I will do that. Uh, I'll do that as an extra video at a later date, I think. I've got a uh, roll effects here, Automat f3.5 lens, Zenar in this case, made about 1950. So it's got a uh, bit of high mileage model. This one, you might say. I want to replace the focus screen in this. It's got a plain ground glass focus screen, um, framing lines on it, but I want to replace it with a bright screen. So I've got a bright screen here that's come to me from Rick Olson in the States. And these have a good reputation. The one I've ordered here has a uh, split image focus aid in the centre of the screen. So 
what I'm about to do now is just remove the finder, tip, it, tip the finder upside down, remove the screen, put the replacement screen in place, blow out any dust from inside the camera and put it all back together. Hopefully the focus will be good and uh, I can't see any good reason why it should have shifted and move on from there. I'll be interested to see what the results are like. Well the first task is to remove the four screws from beside the that hold the hood assembly in place. These are awkward to get at. There's, um, it's very awkward particularly to get to the front ones. Using a fairly long screwdriver I think I can get to the rear ones okay. The screws are painted too, which makes it less than wonderful to deal with because paint is somewhat more fragile than dealing with uh, chrome plating or nickel plating. The two at the front are awkward to get at. You, you can't get straight down onto them. Alright, let's see if the hood will lift off for me. There it goes. We can look down into the camera. This is the parallax correction stuff here. You'll see that they swing over those masks. And basically they just mask a portion of your focus screen top and bottom. And uh, give you a better idea of your parallax. And here we have the hood and the screen. The screen's held in with some spring clips, front and back, and I don't know how awkward these are going to be to get out. I've got to press them down and then they should move forward. They're quite stiff. I'm being cautious here because I want a little bit of practice at this because when I go to put the new screen in, I don't dare want to scratch it. Okay, that looks like it'll go. Let's find another pair of tweezers. Alright, that unclipped fairly easily. And that one just rocketed off into space, but I've got it back. There's a lot more tension on those clips than I was expecting. There's my screen, one that I've taken out. This is glass. Clear on the top surface, on the bottom surface, that's the ground glass finish. And it has uh, framing lines on the glass. You can probably just about see those. So I'll put that carefully to one side, because it isn't rubbish. My screen. My new screen is here. 
So I want to get this off carefully. Let's remove that tape. Well, here's my new screen. Now the ground glass side goes downwards. This this side here. The top side has a Fresnel lens engraved in it as far as I can tell. Anyway, it looks very interesting. making sure it's clean. I'm not sure how much cleaning you can do on something like this. Plastic uh, focus screens are sometimes very very delicate. Alright, that looks okay. That drops into place nicely. But I've got to get my springs in position and as I say they're somewhat enthusiastic I don't know how easy this will be one It's not clipped in position properly, I think. Now it is. Okay, well, I've made sure they're clipped in position. Front and back. Now I can put that back on the camera and check the result. Well, I had to wriggle that about a bit and adjust the focus backwards and forwards a couple of times until I could get that hood to drop nicely into position. Right, well if I've done nothing wrong, everything should be good. Get my focus magnifier up and I'm going to have a look out the window and see what I see. Well this is hardly a uh, marvellous comparison, but here you see the new screen on the Rolleiflex. 
and here you see a traditional screen on a rolly cord and I think you'll notice that the image is somewhat clearer and brighter on the roller flex with the new screen I'm convinced I don't know if you are